This week we're taking a look at Peter's Car Panini by Popular Demand. And don't spill it, don't spill it. Oh god, I spilled it. You can see my hesitation in having to take my third and final bite of this horrible, horrible thing in one day. Normally I try to make a quote-unquote good version of every gross food I make on this show, but I can't figure it out. That's where you come in. Try to make a halfway palatable version of this sandwich. Take a picture, tag me on Instagram, hashtag, I don't know, Babish Panini. Can do, Andrew. Welcome to my kitchen. Today I'm going to be doing my best Babish impression because I have this Babishy shirt and a camera and I love film and food and 90s TV. So I guess I've been working on this impression for like 31 years. I wanted to take on the panini from this week's episode and boy is it a doozy. It's got chocolate and peanut butter and fake Easter egg things and weird meat and uh, I, I don't know. I just wanted to make something at least edible. So I kind of threw out the whole playbook. Sorry for that. Um, but I made my own version of this sandwich, so let's get started. I want to start by swapping the regular sandwich bread for ciabatta, the Vienna sausages, which I'm not 100% sure are made of actual food, to a kielbasa sausage, the peanut butter cups for real peanut butter so we could get rid of the chocolate. I just couldn't figure the chocolate part out. The Doritos were actually pretty fun. I found some recipes to make homemade Dorito flavor. It's not exactly the same, but it's very close. It's very salty, so I want to use it on the eggs to season them before we put them on the sandwich. And finally, Babish was right. It's not Easter. I couldn't even find a Cadbury egg for just this shot, but I'm going to switch it for a fried egg with the Dorito flavoring on top to season it. The Dorito dust, as it's called, is mostly mac and cheese powder, like almost all mac and cheese powder. We add some chili powder, onion, garlic, and smoked paprika. The smoked paprika has a very strong flavor. You might want to use a little bit less in your recipe. I'm going to mix it up and give it a side-by-side -side comparison to a chip. I mean, two chips. Who, who eats one chip? Yeah, it's pretty close. Apparently this goes really well on your popcorn. For the kielbasa, I wanted to do kind of an old school split sausage sandwich diner type thing. So I cut them into somewhat sandwich sized pieces and then split them on one side using the casing to hold them together. This is so we can press them into the pan and get some good grilling going on. Babish has one of those fancy induction cooktop things and I don't, so we'll have to do a camera move over to the stove. You want a high heat on these, but I think I used a little bit too high of a heat. I went a little bit past the brown stage. It looks worse in the video than it did in person. I didn't just sit around eating burnt sausages. I got some butter melted in a medium high pan and put my egg down for the fried egg. I used the Dorito dust in place of salt because mac and cheese powder is just straight up MSG, which if you're a fan of David Chang, you saw on Netflix a few years back that that stuff's just pure flavor, so bring it on. I learned this neat little trick that's similar to how you melt cheese on a hamburger, where you use a little bit of water to create steam and then pop a lid on top and the steam cooks the top of the egg, which means less cooking time, which means more runny yolk. What's a YouTube video without an unboxing? I ran out and grabbed this panini press and I'm definitely not gonna return it first thing tomorrow morning. I've never actually used a panini press, so I hope I don't light my kitchen on fire or worse, make a really dumb looking sandwich and then post a video of said sandwich to the internet. Some nice crusty bread. Is there anything more satisfying? Oh yeah, gotta turn the panini press on. Again, never used one, but I set it to panini, so I think we were good. I got some nice, healthy sandwich size slices buttered on both sides. The panini press is more or less a two-sided grill, so it needs some fat to give the bread those nice grill marks, which you'll see soon that I failed at. The peanut butter goes on right before the kielbasa, and then the egg, and then the whole party gets into the pool. Panini press. Of the continuing first time panini press crimes I committed, I added opening the lid too soon to see if the grill marks were there. I am not a patient man. And then I broke my egg yolk, so even better. Pulled the panini out and got it on a plate, and of course we have to check the cross section, a babish staple. Cross section's a little unimpressive because the egg yolk cooked a little bit too much, but let's see what it tastes like. The kielbasa's not really working for me on this sandwich, but I had a eureka moment right after I took my first bite. There is another sandwich with peanut butter on it and meat, and that's the Elvis sandwich. So we're gonna make some bacon and replace the kielbasa with bacon. I preheated my oven to 400 degrees and I'm gonna cook it on a baking rack in my oven. If you aren't cooking your bacon this way, you really should try it. It turns out so good every time. I candied the bacon with a little brown sugar and fresh cracked black pepper. This is honestly the best way I've ever been able to make bacon at home. How could I make a video about cooking without an homage to Alden Brown and an interior oven shot? That bacon turned out pretty well and uh, I had to do some gratuitous B-roll, so there you go. 
I started again with butter, and then this time I added a little bit more peanut butter than we did the first time. I couldn't really taste it on the first sandwich. Stacked some bacon. Look at the size of that bacon, it's crazy. I also added a little bit more Dorito dust to this version, and this time I pressed my panini down and left it, which you can see, it presses it down over time, and then we have grill marks. I added the egg after I did the panini press to keep the yolk runny without cooking it all the way through for this cross section, which I hope makes Babish proud, because I'm pretty proud. It turned out pretty well. Moment of truth, how's it taste? I'm going to shamelessly soak up this egg yolk and I actually want to listen to this sandwich. That's how you know. That's how you know it's a great sandwich. This actually was pretty decent. Overall, it was very rich because you've got the egg yolk, the bacon, and the peanut butter all combined together. It was a very rich sandwich. I don't think you would eat this all the time, but it was palatable. Considering where we started, it was pretty good. It had the eggs, bacon, and peanut butter, which made it taste like a breakfast sandwich. Not a breakfast sandwich, but a sandwich that reminded me of breakfast. Like, all of breakfast. I want to take a second to say thank you to Andrew, to Babish, for doing this every week. This show is a part of my weekly routine. I'm a freelance director and filmmaker, and I just wasn't booked today, so I thought it'd be really fun to make a little response video. I've been cooking and making films for about 10 years now, but this was way more work than I've ever had to do on either separately. It's doing both at the same time. So thank you, Andrew, for doing this every week. If you're still watching this and you're interested in anything that I do as a filmmaker, you can check out my Instagram or you can hop over to my website if you'd like. Sorry for this shameless self-promotion, but uh, that's YouTube. So thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. If you actually try this sandwich, let me know. Thanks.